Heinrich Himmler, a man we associate with the greatest evil in the world. Today we see him as a bespectacled monster behind one of the world's greatest crimes. His place in history has gone down as a monster, an architect behind the Holocaust. Himmler was one of the most powerful men in Nazi Germany, and was up until the end of the war, a close ally of Adolf Hitler. Joining the Nazi party in August 1923, he would rise to become the Reichsführer SS. It is with this role that we associate with Himmler the most, as a brutal leader of the SS, obsessed with racial purity, brutality and loyalty to the Führer. In March 1933, less than three months after the Nazis came to power, Himmler set up the first official concentration camp at Dachau. It is with the concentration camps and the Holocaust that we realise how awful a man Himmler actually was. Obsessed with racial purity, he would encourage Aryan breeding programmes. Under the guise of the Second World War, he would pursue another one of his goals, the elimination of the Jews and other so-called subhumans. When the German army invaded the Soviet Union in 1941, Himmler controlled not only just the police force, but the political administration of the occupied territories, as well as through the SS the concentration camps. In 1943, Hitler appointed Himmler as the Minister for the Interior. It was during this post that he would oversee the final solution, the attempt to exterminate all the Jewish people in Europe, and he administered the system of forced labour. After the 20th of July plot in 1944, led by Klaus von Staffenberg, Himmler's position strengthened. Himmler formed a special commission that arrested over 5,000 known opponents of the Nazi regime. Hitler ordered brutal punishments which resulted in the execution of 4,900 people. Some historians have speculated that it seems bizarre that Himmler did not know anything about this plot due to him having a huge spy ring. Some have also stated that he could possibly have been involved, with him refusing a Gestapo request to arrest some of the plotters beforehand. In early 1945, Germany's war effort was on the verge of collapsing, and it is here where Himmler's relationship with Hitler has deteriorated, and where our story begins. During this time, Himmler had considered independently negotiating peace with the Allies. He also debated the idea of agreeing peace with the Western Allies in order to fight the Soviet Union. On the 20th of April 1945, Himmler and Hitler met for what would be the final time on Hitler's birthday in the bombed out ruins of Berlin. It was here that Himmler swore his loyalty to Hitler. Along with Hermann Goering, Himmler quickly left Berlin. Earlier, during the winter of 1944-1945, to when the tide of the war was turning, Himmler debated using concentration camp prisoners as a bargaining chip in negotiations with his warring enemies. It was this idea that would show the lack of humility and the disregard for humanity that would become ingrained with Heinrich Himmler. On the 21st of April 1945, Himmler met with a Swedish representative of the World Jewish Congress. Here they discussed the release of Jewish concentration camp inmates. Because of this discussion, around 20,000 Jews were released. Interestingly, in this meeting, Himmler would claim that the crematoria built in the camps was only used to deal with the bodies of those prisoners who had died from typhus. He also stated that the camps, such as Auschwitz and Bergen-Belsen, had actually very high survival rates, a colossal lie that would be exposed with the liberation of these camps. Agreeing this deal was a dangerous thing for Himmler to do, as he was going against the wishes of Hitler and his Führer. On the 23rd of April, Himmler met with Count Volk Bernadotte, the head of the Swedish Red Cross. Previously, letters had been exchanged between the two. In the meeting, he claimed that Hitler would be dead within the next few days, and he stated that he was a provisional leader of Germany. Himmler asked Bernadotte to inform General Eisenhower that Germany wished to surrender to the West. On the 28th of April, the BBC broadcast a news report about Himmler's negotiations. It was with this that Hitler flew into a rage at this betrayal, and told those in the Führer bunker that Himmler's betrayal was the worst treachery he had ever seen in history. Hitler then ordered the arrest of Himmler, and Himmler's SS representative in Hitler's headquarters, Hermann Fagelein was court-martialed and shot. It was at this time that the Soviets had advanced to 300 metres from the Reich Chancellery and were preparing to storm the building. With this, Hitler wrote his last will and testament, appointing Grand Admiral Karl Dönitz as his successor. He also declared that Himmler and Hermann Goering were traitors. Himmler was stripped of all his party and state offices and was also expelled from the Nazi party. In Flensburg, Himmler met with Karl Dönitz and offered himself to be the second in command. He stated that due to his previous position as Reichsführer SS, this entitled him to become the deputy leader under Dernitz. Dernitz was not a fan of Himmler and stated to him, anybody who is a traitor once is ready to betray a second time. On the 6th of May 1945, Himmler received a written order dismissing him from all his offices. He was no longer the commander-in-chief of the German Reserve Army, the chief of police and Reichsführer SS. 
he was then advised by the newly appointed Minister of the Interior to drive straight to Montgomery's headquarters and say you are Heinrich Himmler and that you wish to take full responsibility for everything the SS has done. On the 6th and 7th of May, Himmler and five attendants stayed at a farm and decided to go back to Bavaria. Here they removed all their SS insignia from their uniforms and obtained false documentation saying that they were recently released members of the secret police. On the 11th of May, the group appeared in Delve, with them abandoning their cars in Marne and continuing on foot towards the River Elbe. In the evening, they found a fisherman who took them to Newhouse for a fee of allegedly 500 Reich marks. During the next five days, the group slowly moved south and entered an area which was already under British control. Over the next few days, the group would be split up. Himmler and two of his escorts walked towards Bremervord on the 22nd of May towards a checkpoint. For those soldiers manning the checkpoint, they were greeted by a bizarre scene. Himmler's attendants were obviously army due to their long green overcoats, but Himmler himself was dressed in civilian garments. The guards were even more suspicious as they kept glancing around to see if Himmler was still there. It was quickly spotted that these three had false documents. The true identity of one of the world's greatest war criminals would not yet be revealed. Still being kept at the checkpoint, he was allowed some refreshments and a floor to sleep on. In the morning, Himmler was then sent to the British 31st Civilian Interrogation Camp near Lüneburg on the 23rd of May. They were then sent straight to the internment camp for processing. That evening around 7pm, Himmler requested a meeting with the camp commander and revealed his true identity. This was probably due to the fact that he felt he deserved better and more exclusive treatment than what he would have received in the camp. By comparing his signature, it was confirmed that the British had one of the most infamous Nazis in their custody. After completing two body searches and changing his clothes, the British concluded that Himmler did not have any hidden poison on him. At 10.45pm, a full medical search was to be carried out on Himmler at Lüneburg. Having thoroughly searched the prisoner, the medical officers came to Himmler's mouth. Slipping his fingers inside the prisoner's mouth to check, Himmler immediately bit down on a hidden cyanide capsule and wrenched his head away. Within 10 minutes, the greatest Nazi war criminal would be dead. He would then be buried in an unmarked grave near Lüneburg, and today the grave's location still remains unknown. Today, Heinrich Himmler is remembered for the barbarism of some of the worst crimes against humanity the world has ever seen. He met his demise fleeing like a coward, insisting that he would not face justice for the evils in which he had committed. Should he have survived and be tried at Nuremberg, it is certain that he would have been hanged along with the other high-ranking Nazi war criminals. Thank you for watching The Untold Past. To support the channel, please subscribe. Thank you.